What was the hot topic of 2005? Imin and peak oil, right? Imin and peak oil. The world is running out of oil and we will never see any oil, right? And I wrote a longish paper about it saying, these people are members of some weird cult, really, right? I mean, there is so much oil on this planet, you know. Hey, this is a gas planet, but next to it, it's a kind of your know, liquid fuel planet, right? And people said, what an idiot that smell is, really, right? He knows nothing. Within two years, we are back to Neanderthal times. We'll be killing each other with spears because there'll be no energy. Energy will be run out of oil. You remember your peak oil, everybody will speak oil, right? No, no, there is so much energy out there, you know, that uh, of any form, there is so much massive natural gas in, in Eastern Mediterranean, right? You would tell Lebanese or Israelis 20 years ago, you'll be elect energy superpowers, right? There is so much undiscovered oil. It's only a matter of money. I, I don't see even any fights for food. Do you people know how much we waste globally on the average? It's 40% now. All you have to do is to price it right, and people would save a little bit more, really. So I don't see wars about, about uh, energy. I don't even see wars about food, really, because we overproduce and waste absolutely everything, really, right? Uh, about water, if you would say water, uh, I say, yeah, I may consider the point, absolutely, you know, because mm -hmm. water situation, which fracking does something which no other human activity ever done in human history. It removes water from the biosphere. All the time we use water, we just use it. You know, we irrigate, evaporate, it stays in the biosphere, right? You drink it, you urinate, right? Stays in the biosphere. You frack and it's so damn polluted that you cannot return it to the biosphere. You have to bury it deep underground, really, beyond any reach of anybody. So the only way that water could return to circulation would be in millions of years with geological upheavals, right? For the first time in human history, we are sucking water out of the biosphere and putting it beyond human reach. Let's play this game. I'm looking for a robot, right? Well, you know, I traveled around half of the country. Did I see any robots on my way, really? So, so much about AI. Hype, overhyped, overhyped, overhyped hype. That's what it is. We are much less inventive than people think. I mean, tomorrow I think I'll talk about it, you know, how uninventive we have been in past 50 years, right? What is that thing which I, which I absolutely hate is uh, groundbreaking innovations, really, path-breaking innovations, right? We haven't had anything groundbreaking and path-breaking in the past 50 years, and I mean it seriously. If you think this is the great innovation, it ain't really, right? You know, it's a debilitation of human mind, right? So that's what it is, really. Uh, yes, I still don't have a cell phone, but it's very difficult because people look at you like an idiot, you know? I mean, where is your cell phone, really? It's very difficult because people expect that's part of your body now. You constantly hold it in your hand and constantly look at it. Right? People never see the sky anymore. People never think about anybody. It's just about this, you know. I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's reached totally ridiculous proportions. I think so. I'm an old-fashioned scientist, which means, you know, I question anything and everything you tell me, which I think is the duty of a scientist, really, right? But North America runs on beliefs now, right? Somebody says something, right? And it's automatically believed, really. Well, that's maybe that's a religious phase to believe, right? But scientists should question. But if you question in America today, ah, that's not very good. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it upsets people. It, uh, it says, oh, you are so pessimistic. People think that reality is pessimistic. French people are always kind of dubious about Americans because Americans are always excited. To be excited in French means that you are sexually aroused, really, right? So, you know, I don't know why Americans always... I have been excited about anything in true French sense or even in American sense. I mean, <laughs> just, <laughs> just that. There is so much hype and any fool now stands up and makes a statement and, you know, I feel in this correction mode. I used to be in the correction mode, like, you know, half of the time now, I'm in a correction or 100% of the time. Do you know how deep is the deepest trench in the Pacific Ocean? 11 kilometers deep, right? There's a beautiful new paper, scientific, vetted properly. In the deepest trenches, in the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean, the deepest worms living on this enormous pressure, the air they all of them contain plastic. All of them, all of them contain plastic. Now, we've polluted, the, this whole planet is basically a plastic planet now, right? We produce about 300 million tons of it every year, and of that, about 10% ends up in the ocean every year. People don't even talk about it. If this is a world getting better, you know, basically every baby born now is sucking in mom's milk some plastic, really. I just don't know if it's a good news, Right, you know, and plus we don't recycle it. They have all these recycled bins here, right? 
This is all sham. This is for a show because China stopped taking your American junk. They don't recycle it anymore. So they'll take it from the recycle bin and they'll turn it into landfill. Okay, so much for recycling. Oh, I saw the here is paper, here is plastic, right? And they just simply tip it in somewhere into, or they export it to Mexico maybe, right? Or whatever. We do good stuff, but uh, boy, we do lots of bad stuff all the time, really, right? What I see when I see a wind turbine, and to me, wind turbine is a perfect embodiment of fossil fuels. First, you have to have these giant Komatsu uh, caterpillar machines, and they did a big hole, and they pull lots of concrete and reinforced steel, right, for the foundations, right? And then even bigger trucks bring these giant blades, right? Because you have to have a huge truck to bring it there, right? And then somebody has to smelt uh, iron ore and produce uh, big iron, make a steel out of it, a huge steel tower. And on top of that steel tower, they have to refine crude oil and make the plastics out of it and put it on top of it, really, right? Why? This is a total embodiment of fossil fuels. Without fossil fuels, that could never be built. And people say, oh, it will return in terms of electric energy return on mm -hmm. investment, of course it will return, but it will return me electricity. It will not return me coke, which I need to build that uh, steel. It will not return me crude oil, which I need for that plastics. It will not return me diesel, which I need for those trucks to bring these giant things. Away. Yeah, so we are a long away from you know becoming Denmark, so to speak. Many good Americans who think that growth will go forever, forever. Actually, not only forever, not only exponential, but it will become hyperbolic. According to Ray Kurzweil, by 2047, so it will be growing so much that everything, our intelligence and everything, will be expanding at the speed of light into the universe. A hyperbolic growth at the speed of the light into the universe. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, so this is a very depressing book. Shows that everything grows like that, basically, or like that, right? On a finite planet, there is a limit to everything. People don't buy books these days. People just hear about books or, you know, kind of somebody mentioned, or people just simply check maybe like two pages on a pirated copy on the internet. But who the hell buy books, really, right? You know, the age of book, is over, has been over for some time, really. People buy books as they used to buy cookbooks, you know. Most people don't cook, really, but they buy cookbooks. It's a coffee table book. They just love these pictures. Really. So basically, all science books became a coffee table books now. Yeah? People buy them and just, you know. Average American reads one book a year. Okay, so I am vindicated, right? We are very good at linear dim dimensions. That's no problem, right? Everybody can say 10 centimeters, bingo. I'm an average guy, I'm modular. This is 10 centimeters. Right? So everybody can see a meter, really, right? Areas, not so bad. One square meter, okay, people can imagine that. But volumes, right? Where people want to say billion, but they say million. And it gets you all these things, especially with energy consumption. So in gigajoules per per capita, this count is about 300 gigajoules per capita, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Europe is about 150, right? Most of the places in Africa are about 10 or 15 or something like yeah. that, right? But frequently you can say that people say instead of gigajoules per year per capita, people say megajoules, really, which is three orders of magnitude less. So this is the problem. That before we get to discussion, really, you know, what to do about these orders of magnitude, people don't even grasp them, really. And you can give a perfectly good lecture when you be wrong by three orders of magnitude, and people will say, yes, yes, this is amazing, really, right? Does somebody know what is the US debt right now? 22 trillion and counting, really, right? 22 trillion and counting. A few years ago, people are deathly worried about 15 trillion, right? So we basically made them from 15 to 22 in a matter of half a decade, really, right? Maybe these things don't matter. Maybe just they matter to somebody like me working with numbers. But who gives a damn another trillion? We'll just simply print. It's called quantitative easing. We'll print another three trillion and be done with it, really. We live in a totally Alice in Wonderland world, you know, and trillions of things or monies do not matter, really. Buildings are the longest lasting structures which waste energy on a grand scale. Most people don't appreciate that we have gone through the biggest building boom in human history since 1980 with Deng Xiaoping uh, economic reforms in China. Before that, Chinese were living in appalling conditions, and then they started build, 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 build. Basically, they built in half a year now what England built in a century, right? Until recently, practically all of these new buildings were without any proper insulation and single pane windows. If we would have taken that opportunity and built proper insulated walls and at least double windows instead of triple windows like I have, uh, we could have saved billions and billions tons of carbon for the next 50, 60 years, which is the lifetime of a building, 40 to 100 years, whatever. Greatest lost opportunity ever. And we are losing the same opportunity in hot countries. We should also be building super insulating buildings because of the demand for air conditioning.